What is going on, everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you guys are doing fantastic as always. Thank you so much for tuning in to another video here on the Simply Car Things YouTube channel. And today I'll be diving into a question that I get asked very, very frequently on this channel, particularly with both of the BMW M4s that I have owned. And that is the transmission choice and why I opted for a DCT gearbox over the six speed manual. Now, there is a lot of info and a lot, a lot of questions. A lot of people have clowned me for not getting a six speed manual, said I'm not a true enthusiast, said that I don't know what I'm talking about when I say I'd like a DCT over a manual. So I figured I'd just like address a lot of those concerns and a lot of those questions for a lot of people and talk about why this transmission is best for my personal preference and key word here being personal because this is all subjective and everybody has their own preference so here i am just explaining my personal preference so with that little disclaimer out of the way let's just jump straight into the video and get into the first reason why i got a dct for my bmw m4 now <laughs> Basically, that's the reason right there. <laughs> Long story short, I love the responsiveness and the speed of the shifts that the DCT offers. It just cannot compare to a six-speed manual in that sense. And from an objective, data-driven, performance-focused standpoint, the dual-clutch gearbox is superior. The shift speeds come in at under 100 milliseconds. The gear changes when you hit the paddle shifter, either the downshifter or the upshift uh, paddle, are practically instantaneous. There is virtually no delay. And you can also adjust the ferocity of the gear shifts with this little toggle switch right next to the gear selector in the center console. You actually have three different stages of shift ferocity that the BMW M4 offers. And let me just tell you guys, it is absolutely incredible. This gearbox, I would say, is easily on par with a lot of supercar dual clutches that I've driven. I've been in cars like the 570S McLaren, the 720S, driven the Ferrari 458 Italia, and I gotta say, there is virtually no difference between the shift speeds on this dual clutch and those DCTs as well. It is that good, honestly. The other thing I'd like to mention is that with my cars specifically and with the M4s that I've owned, one of my goals and things that I've personally really enjoyed about these cars is having the opportunity to take them to the racetrack and really get to drive them hard uh, and drive them for what they're built for because ultimately an M car is a car that is purpose built for track use. Obviously the M name means motorsport in it and uh, these cars have so much cool technology in them that makes them an absolute monster on the racetrack especially for the price point and segment that they're in. And the dual clutch transmission, the MDCT that's in these cars, really suits the character of the car on a racetrack. Not only is it the fastest gearbox that you can choose for performance and really uh, shaving down those milliseconds on those lap times that do count if that's what you're into, which is definitely something that I'm getting into, um, but it's also just gonna help you focus on just driving and like, understanding like a lot of different driving characteristics and elements uh, that these cars have to them. Um, whereas with a manual, you wouldn't necessarily be able to focus on those things because you're so busy rowing through the gears. Now, that's not a bad thing by any means. And to somebody that can drive one of these cars really hard while still properly rowing through the gears on a six speed manual, all power to them and all props to them because you are a good driver. Uh, but for someone like me that's pretty much an amateur and that is still learning the ins and outs of driving, I really like the dual clutch. I just love how responsive it is. Again, I love the shift speeds. I love the shift ferocity, how it can literally kick you in your seat. And if you're not careful, it can actually upset the rear end of the car. It will literally shake the rear end loose at times. And that's how hard it shifts. Uh, but just because of that, I love that. It just gives the car a more raw feeling. It just gives it this more like old school sports car feeling. and. I don't know, there's just something about it that is just so instantaneous, I guess, that really makes it enjoyable to drive. And then the fact that you can, if you're in busy traffic on the freeway or something, you can throw it into a completely automatic setting, put it in comfort mode, efficient settings, and it literally drives like an automatic. 
it's really nice to just have that dual personality of the transmissions uh, where you can really wake it up or really quiet it down uh, depending on the environment that you're in. Now, the manual in these cars is good. Uh, it, it's cool that it's there and for the purists that really want the manual, you know, all power to them and that's really great that they have the option. But in my personal opinion, the manual on the F8X, the six speed, I'm not really a fan of it. It just feels a little bit rubbery. Uh, the throws don't feel super notchy, which is something that I really like in a gearbox if I'm going to pick a manual. And yes, I have driven a six speed manual in the F82 M4. It's cool that it's there, but there's just some things that I don't really like personally, like the fact that it auto rev matches on downshifts, which for some people that's cool, but if you like that feature, then get the DCT because it's gonna do it fantastic. And if you wanna properly heel and tow downshift on that car, you have to disable traction control fully. I drove a 987 Porsche Cayman S uh, about three or four months ago. I did a review on it on my channel, throw a card to it. And that car was equipped with Porsche's six-speed manual gearbox. And let me tell you, the difference in the feeling of that manual transmission compared to the BMW manual transmission was night and day. The Porsche manual feels so crisp. The throws just feel so notchy. Every time you put the shifter into gear, it just made the nicest like thunk. And just, there was just something that felt so connected about that car paired with the steering and the the manual and the way the clutch felt and everything. When I drove the manual on the M4, it it just didn't offer that same level of engagement. And like I said, it just felt rubbery. It felt numb. It, it I don't know how to describe it. It just felt like I was aimlessly rowing through gears and it didn't ha give me that same connected sense that I, I was hoping to find um, in the Porsche. And when I drove the DCT on these cars, I couldn't help but feel like that's what the gearbox in this car was built around. And I truly believe that. I think when the M engineers and a lot of the M executives were developing these cars, I think the optimal transmission that they had in mind was the seven speed DCT. That's what they built the S55 around. That's what all the torsional rigidity and the stiffness of the rear end of this car is built around to work in harmony, if you will, with that dual clutch gearbox. So. Personally, I just think the DCT is the better pick for these cars. I think because of their high performance nature, their track focused nature and personality, I think the dual clutch is just going to be a little bit of the better choice. And I just love being able to just hit the paddle, flick through gears instantaneously. And to me, I just get a lot of enjoyment and fun out of that. Personally, that's why I went with the DCT. So. I hope that quells some of the uh, concerns and maybe confusion or questions that a lot of you guys may have because so many of you were asking me you know, questions. If you guys could please smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel down below if you are new here. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. And of course, I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you guys, bye-bye.